All right, well, the little frontier has come back into the shop here because I got a misfire on one of my cylinders. And so since it's just a single cylinder that's misfiring, most likely it's going to be a plug or it's going to be a plug wire. But I got enough miles on it since I changed them last that I'm going to go ahead and change the plug wires and the plugs as well. But we got a problem with this motor in that Nissan didn't do us any favors when they put this number six plug all the way back there. It's not even the one on the screen right there. It's not that one. There's one further back that we got to get to. So really hard to do uh, if you don't have the right tools. And some folks say you got to take the plenum off. I've seen that and I really don't think that's necessary because I've done this before. But one of the biggest things that helps a ton is to get you one of these little bore scopes or an endoscope. And I got it set up to my phone right there so you can see back in my screen, I got the little scope set to where I can see right down inside of there. And what that's going to let me do is get that boot off and on and also make sure I get my spark plug in there straight because the last thing you want to do is cross thread a plug on one of these because then you're going to be pulling the whole motor to try to get this straightened out so let's get set up here and we'll get this plug changed I'll start with that number six because it's the most interesting the rest of them come out pretty easy they're a little bit long but I'll show you some tips along the way so let's get set up here go through some tools and then we'll get this swapped out on these spark plugs and wires all right so as far as stuff that we need, we got to have our plugs and our plug wires, of course. But tools, we don't need a lot. We just need a 10 millimeter because we got to take a bolt loose to get our hand back there. And a pair of pliers to pop a clamp. And then we need to get some extensions. I got uh, 3 8 extensions. But the most important thing is to get a socket that fits the spark plug. It's got a little rubber thing inside of it that holds on to the spark plug. And that's going to be real important on this motor because we've got to extract these out of the center of that plenum. And without something to hold the spark plug, you're going to have a hard time lifting the plug out. Now, you could use a regular socket in a pinch with some black tape on it. I've done that in the past, too. But it's really nice just to go ahead and get a spark plug socket. That way you can pull them out real easy. All right. So the only other thing we got that we need is something to stand on because you're going to have to reach way over the top of this motor. So just go ahead and get you something sturdy that you can stand upon on the front there. And we'll get set up here and we'll get this thing swapped out. All right, so to get started, we gotta get just a little bit out of the way to get our hands in there. And you can see them up on top of the truck's front. But we gotta get this little hose out of the way. And we also have these little lines right here we're gonna push forward. So that'll allow me to get my hand in there. And as you can see, I got a glove on and I cut the fingers out so I can feel the spark plug, when I'm putting it back in there, I can feel the wrench it, but the back of your hand will get cut up on some of the sharp stuff if you're not careful. So I'd put a glove on, and then that way you can reach your hand back down in there. So our problem is actually the number four uh, plug is misfire. So if you're curious, Nissan actually made it really neat and easy on us to figure out which one is number four because they put little numbers on the distributor. And so you can actually look and see which one's number four. Well, my problem is the number four, which is this one. So it runs over here and it's actually this one that's misfiring. But I'm gonna change them all out because I need to change the plugs anyway and I need to change the plug wires because I've got enough miles on this thing. And it's pretty old, it's a 2000 model. So time to get some plug wires changed and some plugs as well. Plus we'll look at the plugs when we pull them out and see what's wrong with my number four. But I'm going to start with that one way in the back because it's the most difficult. Once we get it, we'll just work our way forward and we'll get all these changed out. So step one in all of this is to get this little hose out of the way. And so what we want to do is get a 10 millimeter and we're just going to reach right up under there and take that little screw out. All right, so there's our little bolt. So we're going to keep him. All right, so that's freed up. Now we just got to get it loose right here with this clamp. So we're going to take that clamp off and then we can take that hose out of the way. Now we'll just slide the clamp back and give it a wiggle. There we go. So 
now we got that out of the way, so that gives us some more room for our hands. So we'll just set it out of the way over here. We'll have to deal with it. So now all we got left back here to get out, and you can see my fingers in the scope over here. And I'll hit record once I get down in there and get this stuff out of the way. But you can see I can reach down in there and I can also see with that little scope, I can see what's going on. So get my scope set in there. So you got so see right there is the plug wire on the camera. So let me get these pipes out of the way. So next all you do is take these little things loose and just pop them up and the little doors will open. Whoop, my little door broke. I'm gonna have to glue my little door back. So those pop up and pop loose. And then that gives you enough room that you can pull these forward. And so that's gonna allow us to get our hand in there when I pull that forward, working on this one. So you could just leave it forward or I'm gonna take a zip tie and I'm gonna zip tie those little guys, pull them forward right here for this number six. So we'll pull them up right up here beside the intake plenum. So now they're out of the way. So now we're in good shape. We can reach our hand all the way down in here and we can get to this plug wire that you can see there. So I'm going to hit record on my little endoscope or my little bore scope because that's a cool feature of this thing. And if you don't have one of these, it's only about 40 bucks for this little bore scope. You already got 60 in the plugs and another 50 in the wire. So why not treat yourself to a cool tool and get you one of these little things right here, hook it up to your phone and then you can see what's going on. So We'll hit record right here, and then we're going to pull that plug. And now I can access it real easy, and I can see what I'm doing on my little scope. So I just grab the top of that plug wire, and I pull it out. And so as simple as that, now we got the plug wire off. And you can see down in there, if you see inside with the scope, I can move it around a little bit. All right, so I got my endoscope adjusted around a little bit, and right here on the scope, you can see the spark plug. I can actually reach down there, and I can touch it with my finger way down in there if I get on down. So I got a good shot on it. Let me get my camera moved back. Now all I got to do is get a wrench down in there, but before I take the plug out, what I want to do is take some air and blow off around it because there might be some sand and crud and stuff that's falling down in there. You don't want that going down in your motor, and you definitely don't want it in your threads because it can lock a spark plug down and you won't be able to get it out. So, let's get us a little air nozzle, and all I did is I just got an a air line, and I took a piece of rubber hose that I could slip down in there, and just a rod, and so I can slip it down in there, and then go right down, and I'll see it on the camera, go right down there where the spark plug is hiding, and you might have to bend it a little bit, to get it around things, but you can see right there as I go in, I got to bend it just a little bit. Let's see, now we can get right down there. So I just want to blow anything out that might be around that plug. All right, so with the plug hole cleaned out, there's nothing down in there. Now all we got to do is take the plug out. Before I put this in here, I don't want to lose my socket down in the motor. So I'm going to go ahead and take some black tape and I'm going to tape this thing on there. Because, like I say, it's no fun when you go dropping tools down in the motor like that. All right, so let's see if we can get our first extension down in there. So you can see the extension's coming down. We got to get it just down inside of there and on top of our spark plug. So this is where the endoscope comes in super handy is because I can see that spark plug and I can get the spark plug wrench down on it. So there we go. So we got our wrench down on our spark plug you can see on the scope, it's kind of dark now in there, but our wrench is down on the plug and you want to note the orientation of it at an angle because you're going to have to hit that angle when you put it back in there. So it's a little bit crooked, so I got to get a swivel. Let's get this 
swivel put on. There we go. So now we got it up high enough, we can get it out of there. We're down good on our plug. So now all we got to do is break it free and spin it out of there. Alright, so after a little bit of spinning around, you can see our plug is free and the cylinder 6 doesn't look too bad, so we're just going to put us some anti-seize on there, put our new plug in, and then we'll put our boots back on for our new and work our way to the front. So there you go, and as you can see on the scope, I got it recording again, you can see that right down there is the spark plug hole, and we look pretty good and clean, so now all we got to do is just take our new plug, put it back down in there, and then we'll tighten it back up, making sure it's not cross-threaded, and then we'll be done with that hard one. The rest of them will be easy. So let's get a new plug and get us some grease on it, and then we'll go about this. All right, so with our new plug right here, all we're going to do is drop that thing down in there, but we got to put a little bit of anti-seize on it, so get me a little bit of anti-seize. Right here, you can buy these little packs in the store. We're gonna put anti-seize on it just to make sure we can get that plug back out once we go for our next plug interval. All right, so with our plug up in here, all we gotta do is slip it back down and I'm looking at my scope so I can see what's going on. I'm going to take it right back down in there. And tilt it right in toward the hole. And then, using the same angle that I had before, once I get it into the hole there, just make sure that it goes in. You don't want to put a wrench on it immediately. You want to go ahead and start it and make sure that it's not cross it. So I just spin, spin, spin. And if you want to make sure it's getting a bite on it, you can lift your socket up. And you can see if the plug stays in there, when you lift up your socket, then you know you've got it started. So put our socket back down and we'll just keep turning until we get it down by hand tight. Then we'll put our wrenches on it and we'll tighten it on down. And there we go. So now we got our tack back up. We can pull our wrenches back out. And move our wrench scope back around so we can see a little bit. So now all we got to do is pick the right plug wire. And so we got two long ones. These are the ones that are going to go here and here. And if you look at the remaining four, all the ends are the same. They're just a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. So what we got to do is match up this one to which one of these it is, and then we'll replace it out. Feed him back out of there. Like that. So now we just got to match up which one he is. So he's a pretty long one. And so we get this one. Yeah, so is that one right there. So we just want to swap out for our new one. So we just put him back down in there. All right, so with our plug wire back on here, you can see we got it headed down. So there's our plug right down in there. So we just wanna take our plug wire and get it over the top of the hoses and get it on top of the plug. Then we just gotta push it down on there. And you'll hear it click when it goes down onto the plug. There we go. So, yeah, I heard it click down on there. So we are done with the hard one. So there we go. Now we just got to work our way forward and we'll be in good shape. Already buttoned those back in and we'll get all this put back on. We'll unzip tie this, bolt that pipe back up 
and we'll be done with the back side we can work on with our plugs well there we go that's how you get that number six now we just got to work our way on to the front all right so with the hard one out of the way we'll just work our way forward now this is the one that's actually causing me a fault and so this is the number four so i'm going to go ahead and pull him off but works the same way these are actually a lot easier you can get in here and grab these and you just pull them and you pull the boot off and see it's really long big old long boot so we'll lay that one to the side right there and so now we just got to get our sockets back down in there so make sure that your socket is at least the same length as the boot because you got to get all the way out at the top so we're going to add an extension and we're going to get us some tape and we're going to tape that one as well and so now all we got to do is slip that back down in there but note your orientation of your socket as it goes in there you can see it's going to lean about the same as this one as it goes in so right about there if you wanted to just to make sure that you got your wrench lined up right so you don't cross thread it you could take a marker and just mark a little mark like right here and that tells you the angle that you're going to need to be to get that back in there so all we do is the same deal Slowly take the plug out. If they've been in there a while, they're kind of hard to get out, even with anti C. So you see them going real slow. Now, now, once I get it freed up and moving pretty good, what I want to do is the same thing with the air. So let's take our sockets back off. I haven't pulled the plug out yet, but I got it loosened up. So now I'm going to take my airline, and this time it goes in straight. So I got to straighten out my little tube a little bit. And then we're going to give that a little blow. And since we still have our endoscope set up, we can run the endoscope down in there and just check and make sure that it's clean. What I'm blowing out of there is all that crud you can see in the endoscope. See, it's on that side. That's not where my plug is. My plug is over here. Right there's the plug. But you can see down inside of there there's a big opportunity for a lot of crud to get right around the bottom of that spark plug and there's our plug so our plug doesn't look bad there's a little bit of crud still around it right there but the plug itself doesn't look bad so i'm thinking maybe the plug wire is what went bad so now we just got to change that plug out for a new plug So we got our new plug and put our anti-seize on. And we're just gonna repeat this whole process. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head. They'll tell you what to do in life instead of everything you know that you could get. Don't let them guide your life towards regret. I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best So treat the worst of times just like a test If only I could go back in time I tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like And find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life A few friends with intent can Help you feel alive Find a passion, take some action And with a little time Just be patient, make a statement Try to enjoy your life They'll try to kick you while you're down They wanna rise up while you drown 
They want to fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless And there we go. So as you can see, these three are super simple. It takes about the same amount of time to do all three of those plus one of these as it does just to do that one in the back back there. But not too bad at all. If you got yourself a little endoscope, you can get right back in there and see. And you can also check these for cleanliness and blow them out. So it works really great. So like I say, it's worth it. It's a cool tool to add to the shop. Only costs about 40 bucks. So it's not too bad at all, and it comes in really handy for something like this. Well, all righty, let's get this thing cleaned up, and we'll fire it up, and make sure we don't have any misfires. All right, with everything out of the way, let's open up the garage door and fire this little guy back up. Good. Everything sounds real good. No misfires. No hiccups or anything on the motor. So I think we're in pretty good shape. Alrighty. It sounded really good when it fired up. Acceleration was good. So uh, I think we're back to firing on all six again. And like I say, a little bit of trouble on that back one, but not so bad when you got a endoscope or a borescope. So I'd be looking to get one of them if I was going to do this job. Well, alrighty. Well, thanks for watching.